Hello, my viewers and my subscribers. I just want to thank you so much for tuning in today um, to another video brought by me. And um, I really, I really felt the need to do this video. Um, it's 16 reasons you could be on the do not call list in terms of per diem work. And if you don't know what per diem work is, it is when you are working at multiple units, okay? You have your home unit that, fought, that not fired, but hired you. And then you have other units that are soliciting your help. Maybe you work for a corporation and the corporation has other units, all right? Affiliate units. And you call the manager and you say, hey, do you need any help? You know, I'm available on X, Y, and Z days. And then the manager, if that manager needs help, they will call you and ask you to work those days. All right. Um, sorry, I have that cold still. Um, I used to work for three clinics at a time. Okay, my home unit and two per diem units. And then the next week, it'll be another unit. You know, that was when I was younger. I mean, I'm not 30 yet, but... When I was in my early 20s, I would I just would be working almost every day. I really enjoy per diem work. I love meeting patients. I love talking and, and communicating with techs and they showing me different tips and stuff like that. I just loved it. All right. Um, so once, you know, I started to get worn out very quick because my per diem assignments were strenuous. Because like I said, it was every day, so I had to slow it down to maybe one or two units a week. And then I had to slow it down to one unit, and then I had to slow it down to no units. But anyway, let me get into the 16 reasons you could be on the do not call list. Number one, you're really slow. You take more than 10 minutes to put on and take off your patient. And this is coming from chapter 13 of my book. Expert tips on becoming a dialysis technician. All right. And when I say really slow, like you're moving slow, like you have no motivation to move faster than what you're moving, you know, and some people like they'll move fast, but they don't have the right technique and they'll make a mess. I'll get into that later. But anyway, number one is really slow. And also the patient may be complaining, man, who is this new girl here? Oh, where's my tech? Where's my tech? Oh, man, you don't want that. That's another video. <laughs> Number two, don't listen. Do not listen to patients when they tell you to stop and get someone. All right. Um, this is a big mistake. Even, um, you know, I've seen this a lot. Let me just put it like that. I've seen this a lot. Okay. Um, a patient may say, hey, stop, I don't want you. And the technician is saying, hey, I'm your tech. Um, I'm still gonna put you on. Let me see your arm. There's no one else around here to put you on but me. That's why I'm here. Get in a big old argument with a patient they don't know. That's a big mistake, come on, whoa. If the patient tell you to get someone, tell them, okay, such and such, I'm gonna get blah, blah, blah. If you're about to do something that, or you're very busy and the patient tell you, hey, I don't want you today. Okay, such and such. Um, who do you want me to call to put you on the machine? You know, or tell the manager um, or the nurse, okay? If the manager's not there, tell the nurse that patient X, Y, and Z don't want you and, you know, you're going to call X, Y, and Z to put them on, you know, just to cover yourself. You know, this is just to cover yourself. That's why you're telling um, someone else. All right. Number three, act like a know-it-all slash snappy. When someone gives you a tip about a patient's likes or dislikes or cannulation instructions, such as don't go too deep in the access, wet stick them, don't dry stick them, you ignore it. So the thing is this. When a patient tells you, hey, I need you to wet stick me. I am, I, I usually get wet sticks. Do not dry stick the patient. Do not say, I'm going to do, uh, well, I, I'm going to do it this way. Listen to the patient. And if they're not telling you to do something that will break the clinical policies and procedures of your unit, then do it. 
or of that unit that you're working for, then do it. For instance, if a patient tell you to stick and let's just say a big, I, I call it an anastomosis, like it's really big, a really big, shiny anastomosis on the access. It's really big. Well, you tell the patient, sir or ma'am, I can stick around it, but I cannot stick directly in the shiny part, okay? And you need to tell them that's against the policies and procedures. I cannot do that. I can't stick directly in the shiny part. They can bust their access. Trust me. Number four, your patients bleed too much post-treatment or complain about you. You don't clean the patient's arm slash garments appropriately if they bleed or you let them walk out a bloody mess. I have seen this a lot. The tech that's covering would not, does not have the technique or training either or skill to, to stop the bleeding. Now, I'm not saying that how do I put it? I don't want to be offensive in terms of the bleeding part. Patients, there are patients that do bleed a lot, but there is a way to help them. Like that is going to really have to be another video guys. Cause I don't, I don't even, I can't go into much, much detail cause I don't have much time, but bottom line is do not let your patient like, Start. You got to be prepared when you come to a patient post-treatment. You cannot like not be prepared. And then when a bleeding starts, you're running into drawers. You're trying to get this. You're trying to get that. Everything should be by the patient. And, and that's one thing that I see that's wrong. Another thing is after the bleeding is under control, that same tech will not even really wash off the patient. Okay, the garments are all bloodied. If you need help with that part, get hydrogen peroxide. Hydrogen peroxide, pour a little bit on the shirt and get gauze or a soft paper towel and help them rub it off. Rub it off of the... Um... I am so sorry about that brief interruption. That was my youngest son. Um, but anyway, bottom line is... Help your patients clean up any blood or mess post-treatment. In my packs, I put two alcohol swabs. Well, gauze, sorry. Two gauze in the packs. So that any residue, any type of blood, I can make sure I can wipe it off their arm. Even if they don't bleed, I still wipe them up because I want them to be as clean as possible. All right? Next, number five, messy technician. You leave pre and post treatment supply trash everywhere. All right. When you are working with other PCTs, okay, really being a messy tech isn't cool, period. But other techs will notice. They would be like, this girl or this man, mm, he is, I don't want to work with him because... He is so messy. He's leaving gauze all over the place, trash, dialyzer. Um, you know, when you open the dialyzer, that the dialyzer packet, um, not the packet, but the film case, the clear case. Some people leave that all on the counters and the area is this is just a disaster. OK, you don't want to be a messy tech. Number six, street like lazy. You act too cute to attend to patients or do the job appropriately. You're not professional. Some people, you know, let me not get too detailed, but some people, they be like, mm, I don't even want to, um, why don't you press your own machine? Because I don't even feel like getting up. I'm so tired. Can you reach it? Can you reach your machine, please? I just got my nails done. <laughs> so that's what I'm talking about, all right? Number seven, breaking rules. Um, you are talking 
on the Bluetooth or playing games on your phone in the unit. Um, that is serious, okay? Some people have discontinued people who who used to be per diems there. They discontinued them because of this very thing. They were breaking the rules. Talking on the Bluetooth. They were playing games like I think it's Sugar Rush or Sugar Crush or whatever. And um, that's a big issue within the unit. Inappropriate, number eight, sorry, number eight. Inappropriate conversations concerning others. For instance, I was working with someone and they made a very inappropriate converse, um, comment and even the patient heard it and the patient was very upset about it. Okay, sexual comments and stuff like that, like, don't do that. Mm -mm. Number nine, nosing in everyone's business. If you're the type that's going to do per diem to gossip and create some type of atmosphere of weirdness, please don't do it. Um, I have worked with um, people like that. Nosy, very nosy people. Number 10, taking advantage of overtime by not clocking out when you have to leave to attend to something and come back. That's another thing. And honestly, in the past, I was guilty of that. Okay, and I got in trouble. Excuse me. You, when you have to go somewhere, depending on your policy, depending on the regulations of your clinic, if they tell you you have to clock out, you got to clock out. It only makes sense to, you know, don't try to steal company time. That could be a problem because what if you clock out you run an errand. I mean, you, you don't clock out. Sorry, you don't clock out. You run an errand and you get in an accident or something bad happens to you. That is going to be a big issue. You're going to get terminated and then you're going to have a host of other problems. Okay, because that's company's time and all of that stuff. So it's wise not to do that. Number 11, inappropriate slurs or sexual noodles. Um, I spoke about that already. Number 11. Okay, number 12. Failure to finish your patient's chart, leaving the nurse to sign and finish what you should have done before you left. That is a big one. No one wants to do someone else's job. Okay, if you're supposed to finish the patient chart and you don't and you clock out as a per diem and you go home, especially if they don't know you and they don't have your number to ask you to come back, that is going to mess you up. That will mess you up. They will not want you to come back. That's a big one right there. 13, calling out on days the clinic is depending on you to come. See, the clinic called you initially to fill in for somebody who cannot come. And then the day you're supposed to come, you don't come? Oh, that is a big no, no. If you know you're not going to come, tell them at least a day before, but not on that day. I've seen that so many times. Clinics are depending on the person to come, and they don't come, and that make the situation even more messed up. That throws everything off balance. I'm telling you. Don't do that. All right. Number 14. Another reason why you may not get a call back is the unit may not want to pay overtime if you're working within a corporation. Okay. So what they may do is maybe you was working at this per diem clinic for a long time, but then they're like, no, such so as said, you know, you don't have to come back. Then you're wondering why they didn't call me. You know, what's going on? I haven't heard from them. Well, it is because they are now asking specifically amongst their own staff within that unit if they can fill in for this day or that day. And just maybe they will go outside to the sister unit or the brother unit and look for someone if the current staff cannot do it. If they cannot work on these extra days or whatever days they want 
you know, to be filled. All right. Number 15, company time stealer. You were supposed to clock out at your normal time, 7 p.m., 7.30 p.m., but you stayed until 8.30 p.m. when you were actually finished at 6.50 p.m. to try to get more money. See, when you are, when you, when you are a per diem staff, people look at you. People listen to you. People watch you. You cannot afford to make bad choices and decisions because per diem units um, have your overtime. Like that's your extra money right there. You don't want to kill that. All right. And then, like I said in my previous video about help me, I'm fired. Um, in that video, I said how crucial it is to work in per diem clinics because you can meet new people. You can get recommendations also to help you um, in terms of getting a new job. You can build good relationships. That is important. I'm telling you. That is important. Excuse the noise from my kids. So, yeah, don't steal the company time because people will watch you and they will talk about you also. You know, it doesn't even have to be in a gossipy way. It could be like, you know what? Maybe we shouldn't um, have such and such back because I think she's trying to get all out. You know, she just, you know, and sometimes the manager will ask some of the staff how you did. And it, you just got to be on point. Anyway. Number 16, unit has hired fresh staff and needs no more per diem. If the unit, I already touched a little bit on that um, with, at number 14. But anyway, if the unit continues to have a situation where they're short all the time, then they will bring in a new worker, fresh staff. You know, maybe that person who they needed coverage for has really officially quit or has been sick and will not be coming back. So now they really need someone solid that can fill that role so that they will not have to look for a per diem person or ask you, you know, to come back or whatnot. So These are the 16 reasons um, you could be on the do not call list or they may say, you know what, you don't, you don't have to come back and you may be wondering, okay. Um, I have been in, in a situation many times where I was stopped by someone from above. I said, let me call this person. I need them to cover me. I need them to cover me. Or do you want me to call this person to cover you since you're not going to be here? And I was told, do not call them again. Don't call them again. It happened so many times in many different units I worked in. Well, let me call this person to see if they can nice. Uh -uh. We already know how they work. Uh -uh -uh -uh. We want you here. When I was doing per diem, I had good feedback. I made two mistakes. And one mistake I made that I remember is I didn't give enough thanks to the clinical manager that gave me the per diem. Okay, this is extra money we're talking about. Per diem is extra money. You need to thank whoever let you in. It's not kissing butt. If you say, you know what, it's not even bribing. I don't even, I know some people may say it may be bribing, but I don't even think it's bribing. If you say, you know what, let me just get you a cup of coffee or some donuts. I just want to say thank you for even calling me, even thinking about me to work, to allow me to work even at your facility. Thank you. 
Like, that is awesome. Thank you so much. Because you could have called all these other people, but you called me. Thank you. I want to show my appreciation to you. Even down to the tech that referred you and said, hey, talk to their manager about you. You need to thank them. Show them some type of appreciation. That's one thing I didn't learn until later. Once I started slowing down my per diem work, then I said, huh, I could have really made a better impression if I just did something to say thank you for thinking about me to even let me work in your unit because you got name after name you could have called, but my name came to your mind. And it's not that I'm trying to think I'm all that. I'm not, but I went through too much hell not to learn from it. The reason why I have these 16 reasons is because I've learned, I've seen, and some of these I experienced. And when you come into a unit, it's a certain etiquette you need to have when you're coming into a per diem unit. You don't need to be like showing off. And what I mean is like, hey, you know, I'm blah, blah, blah. I'm from blah, blah, blah. You need blah, blah, blah. Just be yourself. Be yourself. You don't have to tell crazy, lame jokes to fit in into that unit. Just be yourself. Be yourself. And people respect you. They will respect you. The patients will respect you. The staff will respect you if you be yourself. That is the best way. If a patient want to give you a tip about them, listen. That's all I did in per diem units. I listened. I never ran my mouth. Sir, ma'am, what do you want? How can I help you? My name is Kasia from X, Y, and Z unit. I'm here to serve you. And when they saw how well I worked, those patients loved me. They did not want me to leave. Every time I worked in a per diem unit, it's when are you coming back? When are you coming back? Now, like I said, I was not perfect. No one is. But I just utilize what my teammates in my per diem unit tell me. What I already know. And I make that patient experience the best ever. I clean up those patients' arms. They're like, wow, my own tech never did this. I'm like, huh? Let's not talk about your tech. Let me just help you. Because I don't like to, when some, a patient tell me, hey, my tech did this, my tech did that, don't, don't get involved. Just say, okay, I'm sorry you went through that. What else can I do to help you in this moment? Because you don't want to bring in negative, that negative vibe. You don't want to do that. Mm -mm. So if they want to complain, say, you need to tell my tech when he come to do this and do that. You say, ay, 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 I just can't. That's my own technique. He has or she has their own technique. You know what I'm saying? So what I can do is use, use what I know on you according to the policies and procedures. You know, so anyway. Guys, I encourage you to get out there and find a per diem clinic and, and do this. All right, get to know people, get to know patients, build a good rapport about yourself. You know, learn new things. That's what I'm about. I love learning new things. I love connecting with new people. I just love it. It's just a thrill. That's why I like dialysis because it's just a thrill, the thrill of perfecting my 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 craft in a way you know it's just i just love learning and i just love getting better at it day after day so that's why i have still a love for the dialysis field because it's just awesome it has its ways i'm telling you it has its ways but it's still awesome okay sorry that this video is long but anyway you get the gist of what i'm saying um, if you want more tips, you get my book here, Expert Tips on Becoming a Dialysis Technician. It's on Amazon, Barnes and Nobles, and Lulu.com, also Smashwords. And um, if you haven't joined my Facebook group, Dialysis Technician Facebook group, join it today. I put the links underneath this video. If you have not subscribed, please subscribe. 
Also share this video. If you know of another technician, share this video with them. And this will also be posted on my blog with some more details. Dialysis technicians worldwide .blogspot.com. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, you can contact my me on my blog or on Facebook. All right, so um, you have a great day. Bye.